and you're very welcome along to the evening show. Coming up on the program tonight, Education Officer with the DSPCA, Miriam Kearns, will be here with a very special guest indeed. You must stay tuned for that. Also on the program, I will be popping off to the RDS to catch up with just some of the contributors at Showcase 2011. That's all coming up tonight on the evening show. Now, everyone who owns a pet out there knows that it's a huge commitment, especially when you're trying to train them. An education officer from the Dublin SPCA, Miriam Kearns, is here with a very special guest, Carlos. Miriam, thank you so much for bringing... You're very welcome. Carlos. Thank you. He's delighted to be here. <laughs> and what? He's a lurcher. Carlos is a lurcher, yeah. The lurchers are actually a hybrid of a greyhound. Um, so he's, uh, he's a lovely, fine animal, and he's a year and a half, and he's looking for a home. Oh. Yeah, he's looking for a family to adopt him. Now, what type of home would suit this type of dog? Well, Carlos will do really well in a family home. Um, lurchers are fantastic with small children. Also, um, if the mum in the home is a little bit like me um, and doesn't like dog hair, lurchers are fantastic because they only have one coat and um, they don't shed. So, no dog hair. I'm rubbing Carlos hair and he's not shedding. So, he'd be fantastic with people. Um, who like a clean, tidy home, um, who like nothing better than an obedient dog, you see, on cue. Very <laughs> easy going, um, extremely, extremely good with people, a people pleaser. All lurchers are like that, but Carlos is just absolutely fantastic. And he's neutered, he's microchipped, he's fully vaccinated and house trained. He is a dream dog. Perfect. The perfect companion, aren't you, Carlos? <laughs> yes, he's perfect a companion. Letter. Now, let's talk about, you know, the whole Christmas Christmas rush because a lot of pets were bought in Christmas. Yes. And yeah. I imagine it's around now or maybe in a month or so's time that maybe the novelty might have worn off or the training hasn't happened and the pet is now almost a nuisance in the home. Mm. How easy is it to train a dog so that it, it becomes part of the family? Well, you know, you are so right there. Um, it's very easy to train a dog so it becomes part of the family. And usually we find that around the midterm break, February, March, um, the novelty has worn off and uh, kids have come back to school and mum's left minding the puppy. And the puppy is chewing the heads off the Barbie dolls or mummy's lovely shoes. So we run training classes every weekend at the Dublin SPCA up in Rathfarnham. And it's very, very easy to train your dog. And it's never, ever, ever too early. And it's never too late. People say you can't teach an old dog new tricks, but you can. So it's never too late. Um, basically, simple commands for a dog. Um, stop, heal, stay, no. Dogs don't understand long sentences. So we have to make it very, very simple for them. And they like simple commands. They like routine. It takes an awful lot of patience, sort of like when you're training a new baby to you know, go to the toilet, a lot of patience and give plenty of treats. So when the dog does something wrong, you don't give out to the dog, you remove the dog from the situation and put the dog out the back garden. That way he realizes I don't get any attention because if you give out to him, he thinks that's attention. If the dog does something right and something you want him to do, you rub him, you say, good boy. Don't make a huge big fuss, no big words, just good boy, and you give them a treat. Or good girl if it's a female dog, and you give them a treat. And pretty soon, they're very smart, they will get to know, mm, I'm getting a treat when I do this. So they equate attention with treats, and that's what they'll do. So no attention when they do something wrong? No attention when no they do words, something wrong. Nothing. Because they misinterpret that as exactly. attention. Exactly. And they think, you know, I'm getting plenty of attention. So if we say the dog wheeze, in the house and you don't want them to. You just pick the dog up quietly, take the dog outside, put the dog in the back garden where you want him to go to the toilet and leave him there until he goes. He, it may take a half an hour, it may take an hour. You wipe the, the, the area in the house quietly and then you dispose of the paper outside in the back garden in a bin. Don't leave the paper in the bin in the house because the smell is still there so he'll still get the scent. And when he does eventually go outside in the back garden, Good boy and a treat. And a treat. Yeah. Perfect. Now, if a dog is, is, is unhappy, mm. is, will, will that mean that he's acting out and, and misbehaving? Is, is that temperament? Is the owner doing something wrong? Very often a dog will misbehave and it's not because it's a bad dog. It's because the dog is bored or he's probably suffering from separation and anxiety. What happens is at Christmas time, um, nanny and granda visit, the kids are at home, there's parties, the dog's getting loads of attention. Kids go back to school, dad goes back to work, 
mum goes back to work and then the dog is left on its own outside in the back garden. Um, he'll do his best to get attention. He wonders, what's wrong? What have I done wrong? So he may start digging a hole. He may start taking clothes off the line, um, taking the coal out of the coal bunker and eating it because that's his way of getting attention. So really what you need to do is not leave the dog on his own for any longer than four hours. Four hours? Yeah. If you are working all day, get a dog walker to come in. Um, it shouldn't be expensive simply because there must be a teenager on the road who needs 20 euro phone credit. <laughs> so give her 20 euro phone credit and ask her to walk your dog. Um, always check with her parents first, of course. Sure. Um, also, um, if you can come home, if you live near home, or sorry, if you, if you work if near you work home, home. Um, come home at lunchtime and walk your dog, even for half an hour. The likes of Carlos only needs 40 minutes walk a day. People are mistaken when they look at a lurcher and they think, oh my God, you know, look at the length of his dog. legs. He needs loads of walking. 40 minutes a day is sufficient for Carlos and he'll be happy with that. The rest of the time, he'll just lie on the sofa. Okay. But so it's important then just to have that little bit of extra time throughout the day so that they don't be mischievous at home. Exactly. How important is it to chip a dog? It is so important. I'm so glad you've raised this because it's very, very important to microchip your dog. Um, microchipping is responsibility, accountability and traceability. So if your dog goes missing, you're 90% more likely to have that dog return safely to you if he's microchipped. Um, if somebody on the, the street finds your dog, um, they should take the dog to a vet, a pound or a shelter where they'll be scanned with, it's like a television remote control and um, the chip will show up and all of your details will show up. Um, if you get your dog chipped with the Dublin SPCA, we also give you a tag that has a special, unique four-digit number. So if somebody on the street finds the dog, they don't have a, a chipping device, you know, a, a remote control sure. scanning device in their, in their purse, or they shouldn't have. I'd be worried if they did. <laughs> um, they can ring us. There's an 087 number. We answer that 24-7 and we ask them for the unique four digit tag at the bottom of, of the chip. It'll, be, it'll start with a D and four digits for a dog and a C and four digits if it's a cat. And um, once they read us that number at the end, we can give them the details of uh, the of dog's the owner. owner. Yeah. That's fantastic. It's so it fantastic. really is so important to have your dog chipped Very. in case, and, and your cat as well. Very important. And um, it's painless on the dog and on you because it's only 25 euro at the shelter. If you give us a ring, we'll tell you to come up. It takes about three seconds. It's like getting your ear pierced. Perfect. Now, there are a lot of, uh, of animals, dogs, cats and animals at the Dublin SPCA. Um, they are looking for homes. Yes, they when are. You, when you go as a family, I mean, what's the trick when you're picking um, a, you know, a pet for the family? Because I imagine there's a lot of considerations. Well, we would ask people to come up with the family. So if mom, dad, the children, or if grandmother or granddad are living with you, whoever is going to be in that animal's life, be it a cat or a dog, we'd say everybody should come up and um, meet the animal, socialize with the animal. We have a sitting room situation at the shelter where the family can go in, sit down, have a cup of tea, and sit with the dog or the cat and play with them. Um, also, we'd look at the family dynamics. You know, are there small children in the house? Um, so it would depend on the type of dog that really would be most suitable to you if there's a small child in the house. Um, do you have guinea pigs in the house or hamsters? If you do, well, maybe a lurcher or a greyhound is not the best dog for you. Mm -hmm. You know, because they are sight hounds and they are hunters. So little furry things, they tend to go after. <laughs> So there's a really, there really is a lot to think about. There's an then, awful lot to think about. And the advice is there at the Dublin SPCA. Yes, we have a very strict rehoming policy. But we rescued 4,400 animals last year and we rehomed nearly 4,000 of them. So That's even incredible. though we're very, very strict, we still rehome most of our animals because um, the, the, the ones we don't rehome are wildlife. Okay. I have to say. So obviously we can't rehome wildlife. We rehabilitate them into their natural rehab, natural, natural habitat. Sure. But um, for the likes of Carlos, though, definitely he would be looking for a family oh. to love him because he's fantastic. Well, after this debut you can see how well on, on City Channel and Channel South, I imagine the phone will be ringing and the website really quickly if people want to get in touch. It's www.dspca.ie. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for being You're with very us. welcome. And thank you for having us. Carlos, You've made a huge us. impression on him here. Look at him. <laughs>
<laughs> well, thank you so much for being with us and uh, for telling us all about it. And no doubt the phone will be ringing off the hook. I hope so. I hope so. Thank you so much. Now, if you want to get your hands on the beautiful Carlos, you know what to do. You just log on to www.dspca.ie. Now, we're going to take a quick break still to come. I will be heading off to the RDS to check out Showcase 2011. See you in part two.